Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed, and a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today we're going to be reacting to the best interview with Hamza, can't pronounce the last name, but yeah, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Bro, I heard that you made videos about me, and you were mocking me. I have to defend my honor, and I have to use my expertise in boxing. I must warn you, I am armed with a weapon that very few are armed with. What's that? It is called the super beard! Bro, even goats have beards. Now put your hands up. I warned him. I said put your hands up. I don't need to do that, brother. Tiger! Uppercut! Perfect! It is done! Assalamu alaikum, brothers. Wa alaikum as -salam. Welcome to Smile to Jannah. So this time, we've got the brother, and we're going to ask him a few personal questions. None of those dodgy, oh, what do you do in your spare time, so weird questions. We're going to ask him some proper questions that we can actually benefit from. Sorry if I got a bit heated there. I just don't like those weird questions, normal questions. Who does that? Yes, okay. You weren't supposed to res respond to that, it was rhetorical, but okay. I'm, I'm going to move on. Without further ado, let us begin the show! So you want me to say something? Question number one! What is the funniest argument? <laughs> I haven't said it yet. <laughs> yeah. It's just hilarious. Fatality! Oh. Sorry. Unusually strong for, for a man from Greece. No offense to the Greece people. To the Greek people. Greek people. There's no such thing as Greece people. What if they're covered in Greece though? Well, the Probably... That's a check and a mate! <laughs> a check and a mate? No, check, check and a mate from chess. Ah, oh, good luck. Oh, it's a mate from the Czech Republic. That works as well. This guy's a genius! An evil genius! How is he doing this? What is the funniest argument you've come across from an atheist? Well, that's a very good question. I know! The funniest argument I heard from an atheist was in Australia. The atheist said to me, Knowledge is haram in Islam. <laughs> and he said that there was a famous scholar called Al Ghazali, may Allah have mercy on him, um. who wrote the book, The Refutation of the Prophets. And in that book, he said, Knowledge is haram. So I went to the podium and I said, I'm thinking I should not have a debate with you. You've come to discuss with Muslims about Islam. And you've said that Islam says knowledge is haram. There are various ayat in the Quran, verses in the Quran, ahadith, statements of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that talks about seeking knowledge, right? I said to him, "Where do you get that information from?" And he said, "It's from Al Ghazali, who wrote the book, The Refutation of the Prophets." But that book is called Tahafut al falasifa which is the incoherence of the philosophers. Wow. He didn't read the book. He didn't know the name of the book, and he says something about Islam which is completely and utterly false. So that for me was very funny. Number two, how do you manage your time? There are three main things that I do. Dawah, family, and training, physical training at home. Mm. But most of the time is Dawah and family. So I revolve my whole life around these three things. The majority of the day, obviously, may concern working, reading, writing, delivering lectures, preparing for workshops, international trips. How do you discipline yourself though? How do you, how do you keep going, plugging away? I think it's about motivation. If you have the right intrinsic motivation, and you have the right people around you, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. So if you know that da'wah, calling people to Islam, Expressing Islam, articulating Islam in a warm, compassionate, intelligent way is something that defines who you are, then you're always going to do it. That's good, but what about when you're down? How do you pick yourself back up again? That's a very good question. I know. There are a few things you could do. B 
be around good company because good company is very important as we know from the Quran and the prophetic teachings. Do some exercise, that helps as well. Ponder upon the Quran. Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran." Do they not reflect upon the Quran or are there locks on their hearts? So the more reflection you do, the more your heart becomes unlocked to receive His guidance and mercy. Insha'Allah. Number four, what is your advice to someone who's got doubts about the deen? My advice who has doubts in the deen is the prophetic advice from the Prophet ﷺ. Do not allow doubt to override certainty. So when you're in a state of doubt, focus on the things that you're certain upon. Okay? The other point is, if you have any whisperings, like certain shubahat or waswas, like certain small doubts or whisperings, remember, don't take them seriously if you're already certain about something. Because even the Sahaba, they will come to the Prophet ﷺ and they would say to him, we have things in our mind that we would never want to express. They would rather throw themselves off cliffs basically. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this is essentially Iman. This means you have faith. Just ignore them. However, when that doubt becomes a significant doubt, then don't worry. Because the more knowledge you learn in Islam, the more your doubts become diminished. So the key to removing doubts is gaining more knowledge. Because the more knowledge you have of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and even the secular sciences, your doubts diminish. But also, some doubts though are because we're not close with Allah. And if the more closer you come to Allah via dhikr, afkar, dua, reading Qur'an, salah, praying, and loving Allah and getting to know Him, your doubts will diminish. And this is from my humble experience. Number five, what do you do a day before your debate? And more importantly, an hour before you debate. A day before my debate, I might go to the gym or at home, just train at home. I will try and maybe get a haircut. No, no, there's nothing there. Maybe putting some notes together. Maybe practicing what I'm going to say. Dua. Always make dua. What about when you get really nervous and cold feet, like, oh, what if I mess up on stage? And well, Life's full of mistakes. I've done many mistakes, even in the da'wah. I mean, if you're fearful of mistakes, then you're not going to have anything in life. I mean, the person who's never done mistakes before has probably never breathed before. And that's why we have to respect people who put themselves forward. Not me, but other people who are better than me. And there are many better than me in this field. And they've done mistakes as well, but ikhlas, sincerity, doing it for Allah means the minute you, you hit the floor, you bounce back up. Because you're not doing it for anybody else, you're doing it for Allah. And an hour before the debate, I might just walk. If I'm in the venue, I might be there half an hour early, I just walk around with my notes and just basically reflect and not be consumed by maybe nerves or agitations because I know it's just a process. Because the minute you get what I would call stagnated, you stay still psychologically and you get kind of imprisoned by your emotions because you think that is your permanent state. But from experience, I know it's just a process. So I let the process continue and I know it's going to finish. Inshallah. This is good. We can apply it to say job interviews or if we have presentations at universities and stuff. This is some good advice, mashallah. But a good question as well. Wouldn't you agree? Because the questioner is good as well. Mashallah. Tabarakallah. Excellent. Yeah, we should not do that ever again. <laughs> please, please watch his stuff. If he's got lectures, visit them, learn some stuff from him. You know. Benefit. Atheism, mashallah, he's going on lockdown just like he's got my beard on lockdown. Until next time, bros and sisters. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is this the first interview that people have actually asked you questions like this? Maybe, yeah, I think so. Yes? Yes. Yeah! <laughs> now, let us begin! What was the point that I was making before I started talking about gym? I don't know, you don't really have points, bro. <laughs> was that just one of those intellectual cusses that I'm gonna go home and say, Damn it! <laughs> you just cussed me! <laughs> gonna continue with the session. 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 S chips. Tomato ketchup. Session. Session. 
Just carry on. That was right, though. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Okay. We'll carry on anyway. Very interesting video and quite an, in an interesting um, interview. What I want, to, I don't think I should say much. What I want to leave you guys with is whatever you think you're looking for or whatever you want, it, it resides within. Everything starts with you within. Let me know what you think about what I've just said. Otherwise, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.